Underwood. Thin Ice! <laughs> To smoke some weed and shut up. My God. Oh, I thought for sure. There it is. Boom! Yes! Okay. Uh, Line Eye Basketball Podcast episode 180. 80. Yeah. We're going to get to 200 for the end of the season, so that's good. Uh, November 29th, 2023, the last one in November, um, which means the next month is December. It's so crazy. We can start doing the snow soon i think oh yeah bring it so, back yeah that's that's something to think about for everybody there's been sure. some snow in illinois already everybody's been thinking about it nobody cares about that um I'm sure they do yeah they probably do uh armchair line eye shout out armchair yeah go Logo find your uh, right. info and stuff over there it's also merch in the full ride network uh, merch store. I'm sure you can find that somehow. I don't know the link, but yeah, some of these days it. we'll get some. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, apparently, Illinois played a game uh, Friday night. There was West basketball. Illinois. I mean, um, what are we even doing? How much do, of I'm this so did tired. you watch? Do you want me to be honest to the viewers? Or, or yeah, I want you to be honest. honest. Let them know how much you watch of this. Three minutes. I almost Can called you... you out during the game on Twitter for not trying. I should have. I, I didn't. I just, I'm so sick of these games being buried on a Friday night. Like that's like four of them this season. Yeah. I mean, in this game, it was, it was how Illinois should have played all these early games. Well, I mean, except this, Marquette, of course. But I mean, the Southern game wasn't great overall, yeah. much better than the others. And it seemed like this game was kind of just like a full it control. Was... Yeah, there wasn't a lot going on in this game. Turned um, it over fewer than 10 times. So Yeah, can't beat that. Uh, Jeffrey got here early and started going off about Purdue. Jeff, how you doing? Uh, you want to read that? Because I don't. Uh, Later. How you, how you doing? He said some other stuff uh, about Shannon and Dane. Can we read this now? Uh, so far, offense runs through Shannon or Dane. I think we need to see at least one more guy set up in a bigger part of the offense, they're still moving too slow on cuts and running the offense. I think that's going to be Damask who becomes a bigger part of the offense, and Damask I think it's hard struggling. to judge. I think it's hard to judge what this team is um, without Coleman. Yeah, and and against these opponents, yeah, uh, I think sure. the plan will look a little bit different on Saturday. Um, and also Damask, I mean, yeah. He's not putting up big numbers. Only had eight points, four boards, two assists, and a block in this game. But forty percent from the field, uh, one seventeen offensive rating, which was like fourth best in the team, I think. Maybe th yeah, fourth behind Shannon Danger and Goody. So like, there's yeah, I I think it's going to take time. I mean, remember he's coming over from Southern, so it's a big transition, uh, and he's being asked to do a little bit more in other areas of the game as opposed to a, his former teammate. Lance Jones, who transferred to Purdue, he, he, they can just kind of stick him in as a glue guy. He's not; he doesn't have to be a very vocal point of the offense. And I think Damask kind of needs to be that in certain spots. I mean, we saw it against Marquette, um, but I, yeah, I think it's hard to jump to any conclusions offensively because, like, do we really think Dane is going to be a focal point of the offense three months from now? Probably not. I don't know. I. Based on last year, to be. yeah, um, but based on last year, like it was the same thing. He looked great against these opponents, and then he didn't do anything against the good opponents. Like, I agree. I mean, look at Dane Danger against Marquette. Didn't do anything against Marquette. He barely yeah. played. Yeah, defensively he was yeah. fine, which is a misnomer that people like. I don't get it. Like people think he's so like you should be more worried about him getting the ball and not knowing what to do with it, which is something that he was doing a lot more early in the season than he is now. Because uh, I think he knows he could just bully these opponents, and he's done so in his career. He's done so in his career at Illinois, uh, but like it's a red flag that he played four minutes against Marquette. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, MJ said he's going to the next two games. If anybody's going out east, that's a long trip for us. Um, yeah, at, you done ranting. I mean, you're like, man, we're gonna well, go through this you know, quick, and then you just start ranting. How about your player of the game? Who'd you get? Uh, yeah, real quick, Dane Danger last season, <laughs> he had. A zero point game against Ohio State in nine minutes. He yeah. had five points against Arkansas in 23 minutes in the tournament. 
He had three points in 15 minutes against Northwestern. Like the best opponent that he played well against was probably Indiana in a loss. At Indiana, he had 11 points and five boards, five of eight from the field. Like, I guess I won Rutgers. He was good. But other than that, he didn't really do anything. He's, uh, Michigan State, sorry. Michigan State, I missed that one. He had 20 points, seven boards against Michigan State. But other than that, he's a guy who feasts on bad teams, which he did last season. His best games were Eastern Illinois, UMKC, Monmouth. Uh, he was pretty good in the UCLA game. Got to give him that. He had uh, 100% from the field, six for six. Uh, Lindenwood, he was he was fine. So I, I don't know. I mean, I just – I'd, I'd like to see how many minutes he plays in the next three games. Yeah, I think Rutgers is going to be a big, you know. Because you have Rutgers, you have FAU, you have Tennessee before you play Colgate, Missouri, Fairleigh Dickinson, then you get into Big Ten play. I get the sense he's not going to play very much against Rutgers. We'll get there, but, like, they have a guy who can defend him. So, right. Well, it's probably two guys. But anyway, uh, player of the game, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, didn't really watch this game very much. Maybe the first game in the history of the podcast that I really didn't watch very much of. I seriously text you, who's your player of the game? And you said DGL, and I said, did you watch the game? And my response was probably not really. Your response was, I'm going to watch it tonight. And I didn't, because who has time <laughs> for that? Uh, yeah, he played 13 minutes, uh, nine points, four of ten from the field, one for four from three. That's five bucks. I said he'd make a three. You said he wouldn't. Nice try. Four <laughs> rebounds. For four. And he made the it. The other three weren't even close. He made one. That's all that matters. He did. Yeah. Uh, he's uh DGL least amount of minutes off the bench for a actual rotation guy behind yeah. Goody Hansberry and Harmon. Brad said that it was nice to see the three go in because he just burns the net in practice. So yeah, he's shooting uh a a Crisp 18% from downtown this year, three of 16. Uh, that was his first three since the Eastern Illinois game, which is why I said he would make it five bucks. Easy money. Easy 25% money. is better than 18%. He shot 25% from three in this game. I'll pay on Saturday. Tara uh, Shannon wasn't very good from three in this game. No, it's terrible. Odd says uh, Damas has a nice pull up jumper from 10 feet. Yeah. He also says Dane has more confidence going into Big Ten play and he is putting in more effort. I don't we will want see. to shoot that down that quickly, but did you watch last season? Because I feel it's like he's a, whole, a, pretty he's a whole year thing. older. He's I know, but he doesn't look that much different to me against these opponents. Like it's Western Illinois guys. <laughs> That's true. Uh, my player of the game, Terrence Shannon Jr., uh, six of eight from three. He only had two shots from inside the three point line, 19 points. One for two from the free throw line, two rebounds, an assist, a steal, a block, a turnover. Um, he's shooting 43.9% from three this year. Do you think he stays up there? Or... Nope. Ouch. Okay. I um, mean, everything like we'll go back to danger. Everything we know about Shannon is that this is probably going to go down. Off. Let's yeah. look at, let's go ahead and look at last season with Shannon. Uh, you got to think that, like, I mean, he looks like he's shooting it better, though. Sure. But last season, he starts the year two of eight in the first two games. Then he goes four of nine against Monmouth, eight of nine against UCLA, which is just <laughs> absurd. Uh, he made five against Syracuse. He made – okay, so he's been – like I feel like he's wasting his threes right now. It looks like he's shooting with a lot more confidence, though. Like when he when he, he is stepping into threes – I think he looks the same as he did last year. I don't think he does. I think he stepped into threes last year and still missed them. Like, I don't think he – I don't think it – I, did you I did you did you like this did you watch the team last season? I mean, he looks the I exact did. same. He's well, just he making doesn't. more. He's You're making crazy. more, so it morphs your mind into thinking How that he looks. How negative more are you today? That's did you what wake up like. on the wrong side of the bed today? I don't see how Holy you think cow. Shannon looks different. I don't see it. Whatever, it's fine. Whatever. All right. Anyways, it's good. Uh, but like, you know, he's inconsistent. That's always been his entire career. Uh, Tommy says, hopefully, Goody can step up. I think Goody's stepped up. Uh, Goody's been shooting the ball well, but you know, if you look back to last year, he didn't even get a shot off in the first 20 games. So he's a bum. <laughs> uh, he picked up his effort running the floor and sealing off. I agree. Dana has been running the floor. Well, they've also Even played, they've today. played four horrible opponents, one bad, one not so good opponent, Ethan and one is great. So opponent. mad about the conference or about the schedule this early. Well, I All mean, right. get a better schedule. I mean, they get three I, games. It's in coming a row. up. They could, they could easily the, be five. The fun and four. part's coming up. They're going to be five and four because of this schedule. 
I mean, he wants don't... to stack wins early and then play FAU and Tennessee. I back think he back. wanted to figure out what kind of team he had early. Yeah, that's fair. So, I would have rather gone on the road to Marquette, though. I know that it was on the road last time it was by a deal. But <laughs> yeah, I, feel like it I don't think been, they had a choice. <laughs> well, it would have been a lot better for the team, I think, if they went because, like, your first true road game. They do been... need to. Yeah, I, I don't like going to the rack as your first road game. That's... They go. It's Jersey Mike's Arena now, but you know they go JMA. I'll always be the rack, bro. Yeah, I know. Uh, they go at Rutgers, to Madison Square Garden, to Knoxville. That's tough. Before going home, and then they go to St. Louis, then they're home, then they're home, then they go to West Lafayette, and then they're home, then they're home, then they go to Ann Arbor. So, like you know, a lot of home games early. Uh, Steve says, I apologize for jumping on Coleman a couple pods ago. That was before anyone knew about his knee. Ethan knew about his knee. He'd been yelling about it for days. I had a first. Uh, hopefully he comes back pain-free. They said they could have played in, in the West. Yeah. Game, but there's I, no need to play him. So. Yeah. the I don't love the idea of a uh, rusty Coleman Hawkins at Rutgers <laughs> against that team. Who Jeez. has the length to match. You Coleman. think danger starts against Rutgers? I can see it. Yeah, I feel like I think he has to. Right? I think there's been a bit of a precedent set where guys coming off of injuries, multiple game injuries, don't start. Right. Unless it's like Terrence Shannon. Yeah. Because he uh, started. Did he start that Northwestern game last year? He might not have. Yeah, he he didn't. Okay. Yeah, he didn't start that game. Okay, so Terrence Shannon missed two games last year, back to back, and then didn't start his game back. Yeah. And he had 26 points. So. I could see him not starting. Pretty good. Uh, Danger was Brad Underwood's player of the game in this game. Great. Two for two <laughs> from the free throw line. He should be. He Yeah. Uh, 16 points, 7 to 10, 8 rebounds, an assist, a block. He did turn the ball over two times. But, you know, that's what you expect with Danger. So only nine turnovers as a team, though. Already said the, the third time this year that they've been under 10. Wow. Really good opponents are playing. I mean, one of the they had uh, twenty six. Luke, Luke Goody's here. Shout out Luke Goody. That'll step up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Quincy Gary, uh, four of nine, zero for two from three. He was two for six from the line. Fifteen rebounds. It's impressive. Four blocks. I think they said that's more than he had all last year together. And I a think. Turnover. One of us, it was probably me, but it might have been you, said that Quincy Gary was the best rebounder on this team. I think I said that going into the season after watching Spain and how him and Hansbury attacked the glass. So I'm not surprised to see him lead the team in rebounds in this game, but 15 is 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 a lot. I wish he impressive. I wish he would shoot the ball a little better, but I guess if he's getting 15 rebounds and four blocks, I don't think we can, go, can complain. Yeah, I mean, he was my player to watch, and I said that I wanted to see him attack the basket more, which he did. The only problem is he couldn't convert a free throw line. So, uh, but his yeah, his three point shooting is is struggling. I, when was the last time he made one? Get that for you right now. Uh, Appreciate it. He has won this season. It was against Oakland. Okay. He is one for 18. Okay. Good win, apparently, now. I mean, I they're know. 130th in the country. That's why I said they're they're okay, but they're not like – Yeah. They're a lot better than the others other than Marquette. Um, but they also lost to Drake by – I know Drake's better than them, but like, you know. I mean, Eastern hung with Kansas. That's yeah, saying that's, something. <laughs> I don't think it really does say anything. I think it says, it says that Kansas isn't that good. I don't think that I you think can do says. that from one game. I think Kansas had a bit of a Maui hangover. And because uh, that, that field, I mean, how many tough games in a row did they play? And plus, you're playing on consecutive days. They played Marquette and Tennessee. I know they had a shaman I mean, layup. Yeah. But whatever. I mean, uh, that game, that game wasn't that. Like, it was. Kansas was up double digits and then kind of just Joe says he has a bad half. wrist. Yeah. Uh, we talked about his wrist last time. Underwood said that it started getting to his head. Uh, so <clears throat> I assume that he will shoot the ball better, but it, that's not what I'm saying. Just go to the hole. If your wrist hurts, you can't shoot it. So uh, Ty Rogers, 27 minutes, four of seven from the field, 
one for two from the line. I think you'll take that 50%. Uh, nine points, two rebounds, an assist, a steal, a block, and a turnover. I continues to play well. I mean, he's getting to the basket. Again, not a true point guard, but he but he finds ways to get to the hoop. What I think is crazy is how quickly they get the ball out of Ty's hands when they cross half court. I mean, a wing has the ball in their hands maybe two seconds after he crosses half court. So, I mean, everybody says that Illinois needs a true point guard to run the offense or whatever, but Brad Underwood doesn't run an offense through a, through a point guard. So, uh, Damas, we talked about, can't shoot threes. Terrible. Luke Goody, though, uh, he can shoot threes. Three of seven from three. Nine points, five rebounds. Illinois, 0. 0.9 three points per possession. Their only good opponent of the season, Marquette. So, I don't know what this offense is. I don't know if just taking the ball out of Ty's hands and not having a true point guard is going to work against a team like Rutgers, who has the number eight defensive efficiency in the country. I think we're going to find out a lot Saturday. We're going to find out a lot. Yeah. We're going to and find against, out. I mean, FAU doesn't play any defense, so that's not really a game that you're going to find out a lot. But then Tennessee, so. Yeah, but I like they played Marquette well. Not yeah, like but they, they only scored 64 points. Uh, they had to rely on really, really good shooting from the two whites from three. Mm-hmm. And they Which got nothing from Dane. Have to do, right? Coleman was two for nine. With a uh, bum knee. Shannon was six for 16. Uh, Gary was 0 for three, didn't make a shot. So, like, I think Marquette, you know, I think Illinois' identity with this team probably needs to be more their defense. Yeah. Jeff says Quincy just needs to crash the boards all the time. Points will come. He's gonna get he's gonna get plenty of minutes. I think it really depends on who's on the who's rebounds. on the floor with him. Like, is there because like if it's the lineup they run out there, like is Damask enough of a catch and shoot threat to other teams where they're like you you need a guy to be in the like this quit do they still feel that Quincy Gary needs to be like a catch and shoot guy in the corner in certain lineups, even though he can't make one, but he has a history of making like you look at his, I don't think he should ever be that guy. I know, but you look at his career, (laughs) he shot 35% last season, 34% the year before that. He's never really been great at it, but he shot a ton of the, like he didn't shoot. He shot seven. I guess the thing is he doesn't need to be that guy. No, but I'm saying depending on the lineup, like if he's in there with Goody and Shannon, then I feel like he can, Crash boards all he wants. Also, Ty is another guy that Ty and Gary are kind of like the same guy on offense, except Ty's not even remotely a threat from three. That's true. Uh, Jeff says we need to see this team play like they did against Kansas. Fair enough. Uh, Hansberry, 17 minutes, one of five from the field, 0 for 1 from three, two points, two rebounds, two steals. Uh, Underwood was very happy with how he played. Great. How he crashed the boards, which it, it surprised me. He only had two rebounds. Gary A stole all his boards, probably. If I would have watched, I would have known. Uh, Justin Harmon, he doesn't, Harmon doesn't score a lot, but I mean, he, he puts numbers up. He has numbers. Uh, 17 minutes, he had two points, three rebounds, an assist, two steals, a block. I mean, I'll take that from backup, backup. Four games in a row with uh, double digit minutes for Harmon. Four games in a row, fifteen plus. Started trying the year to, trying to get him fourteen against EIU and six against Oakland. Since then, 16, 20, 15, 17 minutes. So yeah, and he's got two. He's got uh, double the amount of threes that Gary has this season made. Two, two to one. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, other notes and quotes, Ethan. You're welcome. I got no quotes from Brad Underwood. All he Thank did was God. talk the team up. Um, the only other note I have is uh, Illinois continues to crash the boards like we've talked about. They out rebounded Western fifty four to thirty eight. So, uh, yeah, not not really an interesting game to watch. Uh, we had other stuff going on. I kind of watched it here and there. Ethan didn't watch it all. Um, he's it's not busy. even paying attention in the podcast, as you can tell. He's watching uh, hockey it's or busy. something, probably. Trying to change the channel. Um. Yeah, I was busy Friday night. Uh, do you think – what do you think of this team as a three-point shooting team right now? Uh, I think that you got to have the right guy shoot them. 
Because, like, they're not great from three, but they are significantly worse from the free throw line than they are from three. That's true. They are the fifth worst team in the country in free throw shooting percentage right now. Yeah, free throws are awful. So so you're saying they need to shoot more so they don't go to the line? I mean, they're good from inside the, the three-point line, but, I mean, they're 221st, 31.4% from three last, uh, this season. They were 30.8% last season, so they're slightly better so far, but also it's like two guys that are keeping that from being worse than 300. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would, I would only let Shannon and Goody and Damas shoot threes right now. But I know I that's not Harman, gonna happen. I think Harmon is a guy I'd be okay with. Well, Brad apparently wants DGL to shoot 14 of them a game. I think that's another guy that you kind of have to be like, he's probably better than three for 16. Yeah, I, I feel like DGL's taken a lot of contested, like not just set threes. Is it, a big part of his numbers not being as good as they probably can be. I mean, if he, you know, just torches the net in practice while he's set shooting the whole time, then stop taking crazy threes in games. What is the key time. to winning at a place like the rack? Uh, being a lot better than the other team. Fair. They took 23 threes the last time they were there. Um, they lost the game by 11. Are we moving on? Do I need to timestamp this? Illinois Rutgers, Saturday, 3 p.m. Central. Both teams 5-1. and one. Illinois back in the top 25, up to 24 after a uh, – Jesus, get these bots out of here. It's so ridiculous. Uh, there's like a ton on Facebook. Uh, thanks to all these billionaire assholes who don't know how to run a uh, social media uh, <laughs> platform. Um, Big Ten Network, first Big Ten game of the season for the Illini. Uh, Illinois back – to Piscataway for the first time since February 16, 2022. That was a 70-59 loss against a Rutgers team that they had beaten by 35 earlier in the season. Um, so, yikes. Not great that that happened. That was, of course, the last year of Kofi. Uh, the year before that, they went to Rutgers and lost by three, a 91-88 loss, uh, a weirdly high-scoring game. Illinois shooting 60% from three in that game, by the way. And uh, somehow, I mean, ridiculous that in the final 10 minutes of that game, Rutgers outscored Illinois 37-35. 10 minutes of, of a game, 37-35. So that was the outlier no defense game at the rack. I think this <laughs> one's going to be say. a lot different. That's um, crazy. Of course, that was an Illinois team that, had, that lost seven games that year. One of them was to Rutgers. So it's safe to say that not great for Brad at the rack uh, so far in his career at Illinois. Um they also lost the year for that by 15 there. I'm just trying to find, like, has Brad ever even won there? I think the answer has to be no, right? I mean, I feel like it would be a which team is worse situation if they have. Um, they beat them at home every time. They just can't beat them on the on the road, which I think is the case for a lot of teams. But it's true. Uh, let's see. Illinois Rutgers. Okay, Illinois, in Brad's first year at Illinois, they really? beat Rutgers at, uh, yeah, last regular season game of the, of the year. They beat a 15 and 19 Rutgers team by 13 to get to 14 and 17. So two bad teams at that point. Uh, but Illinois four and 14 in the Big Ten that season. Shout out to Michael Finke at 19 points that game. Aaron Jordan 15, Leron Black 14. Uh, Illinois also made 78 percent of 23 free throws. So uh, that was the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. So it wasn't even the same place. Oh, so. well, that's. Nope, Probably it is the same one. place. I guess it was just a different name. I don't know. I don't remember these things. It was six years ago. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Brad, what, one and four? Not even out of high school yet. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Brad, one and four at Rutgers in his career at Illinois. So, and this is uh, what puzzles me, and and I, I, we're not even really getting into the preview, but what puzzles me is that Brad – came to Illinois with this reputation of like, yeah, his teams at Stephen F. Austin were pretty good. Like his last team, Stephen F. Austin was good defensively. His team in Oklahoma State was all offense. They were the number one offense in the country. And they really haven't had – they've had one season. Just take away the 2021 season. And Illinois has typically been like a much better defensive team uh, in the last few years than they were – than they have been offensively, at least the last yeah. two years especially. Uh, I just wonder what it says about Brad as a coach on both sides of the ball that it's been so flipped. Like his first two seasons, they had a better offense than defense and efficiency. It was pretty even in 2020. It was even in 2021. They were eighth and seventh. Uh, 
It was even in 2022. But in the last two seasons, they've been a outside the top 60 in efficiency offense and inside the top 26 in defense. They're 10th right now. Uh, so it's, you know, it's weird. I don't know. I just thought that Brad would be that, this run and gun offense guy, and they haven't had that. I think that's what he tried. I don't think that. I think he has the players for it. Sadly, I mean. Here are the three point percentages of every Brad Underwood team ever in the okay. NCAA. All right. Uh, every Stephen at Boston. One. <laughs> well, all of his years as a head coach. Okay. This is uh, like 11 teams, maybe 12. Um, Stephen F. Austin, first year, 34.9%. Second year, 37.3%. Third year, 36.9%. 40.3% at Oklahoma State. They were sixth in the country. Then in Illinois, 33.2%, which was 263. 34.5%, top 170. 30.3%, 310th. 37.2%, top 30. 35.9, top 60, 30.8, 335 in the country, and 31.4 this season. Now, I think my takeaway from this from an Illinois perspective is that I think the teams that are above average or inside the top 300 and three-point shooting with Brad Underwood at Illinois really rely on one or two guys. Because think about that 2022 team that was 56th. Who'd they rely on? One guy. Alfonso Plummer. Jacob Grandison was 41% as well. What about Plummer, Trent 41%. Frazier? Frazier, 33%. Uh, RJ Melendez was 60%, 9 of 15. <laughs> uh, Goody was 37%. Like, you need two really, really good shooters, and you need the rest of the guys to not be bums. That's to shoot true. better from three. So I think Illinois is actually overall more of a threat than a normal team that she's 31.4%. Because I think in any given game, you could get four from Goody. You could get four from Damascus. You could get five from Shannon. You could get DGL to see a couple. Of, like, there's a lot of guys that are capable of doing it. It's just about actually doing it in the game. And that doesn't always happen. And I think that that is one area of the game where I think Illinois can improve. And that's how you, if you get some threes to go, that's how you beat a team like Rutgers. Would you rather see him shoot better threes or shoot better free throws? Threes. Okay. Well, I mean, if you're not, if you're gonna go out there and be terrible from three, like, what's the point of even of even living, really? That's what the game is. They shot twenty two percent against Southern. That's pathetic. They had to make eleven threes to barely lose to Marquette by seven. Live and die by the three is how I would like to play, but I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> that is, that is, that's something, I guess. I mean, look at some of the most successful pro. Not even like, I get, yeah. The Illinois is a is a power program. They're not a mid. Like, if the Illinois is a mid major, I would want to do that because you look at like Wofford and Wichita State. I guess Wichita State didn't really live and die by, but Wofford definitely did that one year. Anyway, I mean, Jesus, get into the preview, guys. What are we doing? Um, I don't know what you're doing. I want to have a deep discussion about the three ball and trends. Illinois needs to shoot better. By the way, I had no plans to talk about any of this. I kind of just something something happened. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Three o'clock Big Ten Network. Rutgers is five and zero since an opening night loss to Princeton. Uh, They beat Boston by twenty four. Boston's three hundred third in the country. They beat Bryant by nine. Bryant, by the way, beat FAU, which makes no sense. Two hundred (laughs) eleven. I think I think we need to be very careful about drawing conclusions to teams that lose by games or teams that look really good right now or teams that look really bad uh, right now. Like an example of that, Clemson. Is Clemson really, really as good as as they look right now? Probably not, because number one, Brad Brownell is the definition of mid as a as a coach, and his history uh, at Clemson is pretty much always average, good enough to not get fired. Not good enough to win anything of significance. Plus, they have Joe Girard. That's a red flag. Um, 71-60, Rutgers beat Georgetown. Georgetown's awful. Uh, they beat Howard by 22. Howard, 216th in the country. And they beat St. Peter's by 31. St. Peter's, 258th. I think the trend is that you've seen Rutgers defensively be pretty good and not allowing a lot of points. However, you know, you allow 60 points to Georgetown. What are we even doing here? Uh, <laughs> Jaden Epps is their only source of offense. Uh, they look exactly like they did last season by numbers. Like their numbers from last season are like the exact same. So and they lost Cam Spencer. So I think their offense takes a bit of a step back there. 
Uh, Illinois beat them 69-60 at State Farm Center in their only matchup. I remember that game as Illinois looked awful and then still won the game, kind of what these matchups usually are on either side. I know Illinois killed them a couple times at the State Farm Center over the last few years. Uh, we're doing a watch party for this one, 3 o'clock Saturday. It'll be live about 2.50. Uh, so we should have halftime with it with it not being dark, which I think yeah, is big sunshine. Big news. Um I know that's what everybody comes to the watch parties for these days. Yeah, they see they want to see these jumpers that I'm just drilling. I mean, this is just a little catch, turn off the defender, fade away, bang. That's just right on the money. I mean, it's just it's it's right there. So you see here, and you, people you, say that we don't know what we're talking about. Get the ball here. Play D one basketball up huh? to the left hand. Spin off the defender. Probably not going to get enough lift because I have a torn MCL, PCL, ACL in my left knee. I'm not going to get a lot of lift there, so Since not really a, a high jump. It's just a feeling thing. It probably is true. Um, <laughs> yeah. See, this is just heard it perfect. pop one time. Yeah, I know it's going in right here. Look at that Illinois sky. Ooh, what a jumper. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do. Hopefully, you get that tripod again because that was a big, Warm a big the ball help. up this time. No, nope, we play with cold balls. We're gonna need the uh, the tripod, by the way. So just write that I down. I think it's still in the back of my truck. If not, I'll get it. Yeah. Um, Rutgers projected lineup: guard Noah Fernandez, 5'11", 180 senior, transfer from UMass, averaging nine point three rebounds, two assists. Uh, guard Derek Simpson, 6'3", 165 sophomore, was there last season, averaging ten two and three. Never know what you're going to get from him. Uh, forward Andre Hyatt, 6'6", 235, got hurt last season. Senior, glue guy type, having a good start of the season offensively. I was say, the leading scorers are glue guy? He's a type. Like, he's a glue guy type. Like, he's what I think of when I – like, a guy he just, really he, – he, he doesn't get buckets from, from being a scorer. Their guards, their guards aren't – yeah, their guards aren't scoring as much as I'd expect them to, which is probably why he's averaging 12 games. I think it was actually Mawat Mag who got hurt last year. I don't know if Hyatt got hurt last year. Anyway, I, all these Rutgers wing guys, it's like I can't keep them um, together in terms of remembering their names and who's who. who anyway, cares, right? uh, forward Antoine Wolf, 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 Wolf Folk, 6'9", 225 sophomore, uh, 12 of 17 from two-point range this season. They definitely need Coleman Hawkins in this game, I'll say, defensively at least. Uh, he averages 5-4-1. I mean, none of these guys are putting up electric offensive numbers, but their best player is probably no. the big man, uh, Clifford Amorie. Amorui. I, I think I, I think it's Amorie. I think I did I that think right. You're right. I think that 6 11, 240, every time. senior, 22 offensive rebounds this season, averages 11 points, nine rebounds. One thing about this Rutgers team, at least in the starting lineup, is that four of these five guys have been in the program. For multiple years, Fernandez I, is a transfer. So have they played? Like besides Cliff, has anybody? Did anybody actually have any playing time last year? Simpson played, yeah. Simpson yeah. and and Hyatt as well. But yeah. uh, Simpson um, last season in the Big Ten tournament uh, started to really break out a little bit. He had uh, eighteen against Purdue, nineteen against Hofstra or not Hofstra. <laughs> that was in the uh, NIT. Sorry. But it's still the end of the season. He had double digit points in five of the last six games they played. Uh, but yeah, he's he's you never know what you're gonna get. Like some days he could have, you know, 18 points on five of 16 shooting against Purdue, and he looks effective. And the other days it's like, yeah, he didn't really do anything. Uh Phillips has Mag towards ACL last year. Yeah, that's what, okay. Yeah. And he's uh, a defensive stopper. He's gonna yeah. shut down. This is Hyatt's third season at Rutgers. He was at LSU for two seasons. Uh, last season was playing twenty plus minutes, but like didn't like when I say glue guy, it's like look at his point totals last season at the end of the season: five zero five six ten three zero eight. He had zero points in a game where he played twenty eight minutes. So, yeah, I think him and Mag are both glue guy types. Um, yeah. I assume Mag is still dealing with that injury, but I'm pretty sure he's still there. I don't. I, don't, I can't. Keep he it. is there. I yeah, it's it's Rutgers. I don't even care. I don't know. But where, yeah, so I mean, Rutgers bench wise, their bench minutes, they're 72nd in the country in bench minutes, um, at 35.8 percent. Illinois is 46 at 38.1 percent. So. Both of these benches are, are a bit of a factor. Uh, I will say in their last game against St. Peter's, they had 
Uh, Gavin Griffiths, who's a 6'8 freshman, had six points off the bench. Jermichael Davis, who's a 6'2 freshman, played 19 points or uh, <laughs> played 19 minutes, had zero points. Uh, Austin Williams, 6'4 senior, transferred from Hartford, played uh, 12 minutes. And then we saw a little bit of Oscar Palmquist, the 6'8 senior wing. Uh, I, he's from Sweden. Um, had four points off the bench. So they do have several guys that play off the bench. One thing about this Rutgers team as well is like they have a one of the more notable mixes of seniors and freshmen, like seniors and sophomores. Like it's all across the board. Like two freshmen that come off the bench to play double digit minutes, two seniors that come off the bench to play double digit minutes. They have three seniors that start, two sophomores that start. I Steve Pykel is very good at keeping guys around. A lot of these guys have been in the program for a while. And you look at the freshman class they're going to have next year. Who knows how it actually works out? Like the is getting five stars something that works for Rutgers with how they want to play? Time will tell. You need the yeah. right guys. But Pykel, I've said it many times. I think he's one of the three or four best coaches in the conference. Look at what he has. Look at what he's done. Resources. It's Rutgers. I mean, they've been relevant for a few years now. It's a hard place to play. Didn't make the tournament last year. Made it the year before. Uh, but Ken Palm, a couple of inept efficiency offenses so far. Illinois 62nd, Rutgers 158th. Defensively efficiency, Illinois 10th, Rutgers 11th. So probably expecting a game in the 50s or 60s here. We'll probably get a game in the 80s. Uh, 3.4% <laughs> we've been over it. If you guys want me to do it again, I will. Uh, Illinois 221st in the country and 3.4% at 31.4. Rutgers 297th at 28.7. They'll probably shoot 50% from three in this game, go 10 for 20, because why not? Effective field goal percentage against Illinois first in the country. The only thing Illinois first in the country at is that stat. Um, or two, actually, sorry, two stats. Uh, they're first in the country in effective field goal percentage defensively and first in the country in two-point percentage against defensively. So how about that? Illinois shoots 57.3% sure. from two, and their opponents shoot 37.3% from two. But guess what, guys? Eastern Illinois, Oakland, Valpo, Southern, Western Illinois. That is five opponents where they allowed 52, 53, 64, 60, and 52 points. Those are going to inflate the numbers a little bit. These will come back down to earth at some point. However, defensively, all the metrics right now, except for forcing turnovers and steal percentage, look great for Illinois. So who knows? Yeah. And a big Rutgers, 10 play where Rutgers we find is, out what this team's really made of. Right. Rutgers is four. Yep. I've said it many times. Yeah. Rutgers is fourth in the country in effective field goal percentage against at 40.7%. Effective field goal percentage, of course, uh, computed from field goals made plus 0 0.5 three pointers made slash field goal uh, attempts. It's confusing. Divided this, by field goal attempts here. Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah. Divided. I, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. This yeah. differs from the uh, <laughs> conventional field goal percentage by taking into account the extra value of a made three point. So oh, effectiveness of shots, effectiveness of how many you make versus how many you take. Uh, it adds, you know, the three point three pointers made are more valuable than a two pointer made. Five. Yeah. So more valuable. This is what happens when you play five brutal opponents to start the season. Your numbers are going to be inflated. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just looking up uh, Mag. He, uh, he, he tore his ACL in February. Um, back in October, they said he was two months ahead of, his rehab schedule, but he has not played yet this year. So maybe see go. him in uh, February or January or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, players to watch. Uh, I guess we started putting what position players play now in this. So I've been doing uh, that the whole time. No, you haven't. Yeah, I have. Uh, I went with guard, forward, center Coleman Hawkins for Illinois, and I went with the center Clifford Amaruru from Rutgers. Uh, I want to know if Coleman's going to start. We'll see. Uh, thanks for italicizing that because yep, it mattered. No problem. Um, and I want to see now that his knee is healed, does he move? Are we going to yell at him as much? So I think that he's yes. going to have to play quite a bit because, like you, I don't really trust Dane Danger in, in games where the competition is not Western Illinois. So uh, we're going to need him against Amarui, Rui, Um, And do you think we see a lot of Amani this game? I hope. I think this is a good spot for him. Even though it is a road game, it's a tough environment for a freshman. But 
you look at what Illinois needs, they probably aren't going to, like, I don't, like, is Dane really going to dominate Cliff in the paint? Probably not. I think uh, I, the thing is, I think Dane probably gets three quick fouls against him. Yeah. yeah that's, I, that seems to be Dane's MO against, against centers that can play basketball. And he's not going to score against him. So, yeah. Amani's not for sure. No, uh, Jeff says if this team plays with fight, they did against Kansas, they're dangerous. Yeah. I mean, this team can be good. They, they are. They're not, I mean, they're not bad. Nobody's great. Bad. Uh, <laughs> my players to watch. Guard Ty Rogers. 17th um, time you've picked him in first five road games. environment for Rogers starting at the point. I know that we say how much he hands the ball off immediately and doesn't really run the point. I think you actually needed a little bit more in this game on the road against a team that can defend. I think Pykel is going to game plan this really well. So I think they're going to need more from Rogers in terms of ball handling, playmaking. You're going to need a little bit more. Uh, and then I got Derek Simpson on the Rutgers side. He's a boomer bust scorer. You've seen a lot of really good games from him. You've seen a lot of really bad games from him. Will they stick Rodgers or Shannon on him? I think it's a big question, especially when you have a 5'11 guard like Fernandez who put up some good numbers at UMass. Hasn't been an offensive threat thus far. But be interested to see how Illinois handles that because Illinois has probably the best combination of perimeter defenders in the conference uh, with Rodgers and Shannon. I don't think any other team has that level of it. Um, yeah. Can't think of any off the top of my head. Michigan plays no defense. Purdue has two white guys. Lance <laughs> Jones is a good defender, though. Um, Michigan State, Tyson Walker is not good enough to be in that conversation defensively with Rodgers or Shannon. Uh, Michigan doesn't play any defense. I heard you say that. Indiana. Yeah, so there you go. I think that's a valid comment. Uh, predictions. Um, MJ says Dane's going for 14. Jeff says Ty isn't a ball handler. We haven't oh, even yeah. given him a chance. Same guy who thinks Marquette, who lost to Purdue, is still better than Purdue. I mean, it's <laughs> fucking stupid. All right. Predictions. Uh, predictions. By the way, we both picked Illinois to lose this game. Which doesn't matter. I mean, preseason predictions. I'm just saying. You, but you, you get a feel as the season Illinois goes on. Illinois play. We've seen Rutgers play, you know. and They both and stink, so, yeah. Yeah, we changed our minds. Uh, I got Illinois winning the 71 62. I don't know if it'll be that high scoring, but I'm going with it. Whatever. 67 59. I don't think it's going to be this low scoring because as you uh, go, you see two good defensive teams and then somebody's going to have 30. And it's just gonna, I mean, the example of it would be 2020 or 2021 or whatever I referenced earlier, where it was 91 88 at Rutgers. That was a Sunday morning game, I believe, early Sunday. So. What do you think about a Saturday afternoon game? That's different yeah, better than friday night usually illinois plays at 11 o'clock right in the middle of the sec championship game of football going mm -hmm. right up against it on the big 10 network <laughs> i'm sure a lot of people will be worried about that do you think the sec uh acc challenge is better than the big 10 acc challenge no but also the big 10 kind of looks like poop this season so i just want to know your thoughts yep. uh if purdue and marquette play again who wins purdue they're already beat uh, him. what else steve's you want to got prove? illinois 68 Rutgers 62 steve's right in line with us uh yeah it depends yeah, also, if zach Eady just gets to manhandle people by the way which he Jesus. always does that's how it is that guy just just he puts a hand on somebody, no, shows him out of the way. Please, no call. Can you guys stop making me defend Purdue? Can, can we stop this? It's no. Stupid. No. Um, field of 68 ranked Illinois fans as the fourth craziest fan base in America. I didn't really even look at who they were buying, but I assume Arkansas was up there. I think this is valid. I mean, it's pretty psychotic I, Twitter. Well, yeah. I mean, it depends on what your definition of crazy is, but yeah. I, I we got plenty wish of to be top in three our, in our people in this chat database. right now. Yeah. Chat free. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly. Um, I would have liked to be been top three, but I think if Illinois made a final four run, they might be top three or like a really deep run. Cause that's like Arkansas. Like Arkansas is crazy, but they've made runs. So they're, you know, more prevalent. You have the must bus, even though they look like, I mean, it. Illinois, I think you got to take into account that Illinois hasn't been past the second round too. Yeah. Can Illinois I also ask this question crazy on top of that? But they've also become like Illinois is relevant 
Like in this, like they're one of the best. They are a top three Big Ten team over the last three or four seasons. Like yes. easily, it's them, yes. it's Purdue, and then it's probably what Michigan. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's it's relevant uh, relevancy. Um, also, let's throw this out there. How on earth did Purdue lose to Arkansas in an exhibition? I know it was at Arkansas, but Jesus, Arkansas yeah, looks Arkansas brutal. Uh, mm. I still think the must bus can figure it out, but they're four and three, and you know they lost a UNC Greensboro at home. And they lost a Memphis, who's good, North Carolina, who's good, but still, Arkansas defensively giving up a ton of points. Oh, and they games. almost they almost lost a couple more games, right? Stanford double overtime. Yeah, and they should have lost they, that they, game. They beat a bad Old Dominion team by nine. Not a yeah. bad Old Dominion. I guess for Old Dominion standard, they're fine, but you know. Still. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jeffrey. The problem. Let's go around the Big Ten. Oh. Uh, the problem <laughs> is that you're saying that a team that is the best team in the country, ranked number one, by the way, as they should have been from day one. How are they not unanimous? By the way, they go yeah, to Maui they, and they just dominate. I mean, there's seven and zero. Loose word, but they beat. Xavier, who I know lost to uh, – who did Xavier lose to? Oakland. Oakland, yeah. <laughs> uh, they beat Gonzaga, Tennessee, Marquette. So yeah. Ken Palm's number nine, number seven, number five. Yeah. And then they have Alabama and Arizona. Maybe if they beat Alabama and Arizona after beating Northwestern Iowa and they're 11-0, and 0, maybe that Monday, December 18th poll, they'll be unanimous number one by then. But I just don't – like – they had close margins against Tennessee and Marquette, but that's because Tennessee and Marquette are good teams. Um, they beat Gonzaga by 10. Um, yeah, I mean, Samford is better ranked than anybody Illinois has played, not counting Marquette or Oakland when it comes to metrics. And they beat them by a lot of points. And they, points. I mean, and they don't, I mean, they still got to play Alabama and Arizona too. Yeah, when and they it's win, not those like they games, got some cupcake schedule. <laughs> They've had the hardest – like their schedule last year, remember they played in that Phil Knight thing, they beat Marquette, West Virginia, Gonzaga, and Duke Yeah, four in a row. Like they are the best non-conference team in the country by a mile over the last couple of years. <laughs> Just putting Purdue fourth. Anyway. I like Arizona and UConn a lot, so I think, yeah, you're, you I think you're overselling Marquette a little bit. Um, I think Marquette is very, very good, but I also think Houston is better than Marquette, and I think there's an argument to make about Baylor with Marquette. The the problem for Baylor is that they don't play any defense, but they have an elite offense. Um, but, yeah, I think I think those are the best four teams in the country right now. I would probably put Houston somewhere in there, though, as well. Um, but there's four teams in the top six of Ken Palm right now that are 7-0. It's Houston, Purdue, UConn. Arizona six and zero, and then Mark uh, Baylor, Marquette six and one. I don't know. One thing that stands out to me right now, and we'll get to the the Big Ten momentarily, but like BYU, talk about under the radar. Woo! We'll see how they look when they get to Big Twelve play. This is their you know first season in the Big Twelve, but they're six and zero. They're tenth on uh, Ken Palm. Uh, they beat San Diego State by nine. They beat NC State by nine. They beat Arizona State, who's terrible, by the way, by 28. Uh, but, like, I think BYU is what I thought St. Mary's would St. be Mary. this season. That's what I was going to say. Except yeah. the problem is that BYU is in a much harder conference now. And right. St. Mary's, my God, I don't know what happened there. But uh, <laughs> it looks like we're going to have another Gonzaga rolling to the uh, WCC title again because St. Mary's is is under 500 and just free-falling. Uh, lost three of four. But anyway, the Big Ten, uh, Purdue won at Maui, like we said, 7-0. They have games against Alabama and Arizona looming on uh, December 9th and December 16th. I think the Alabama game's home, and then the Arizona game is semi-home maybe or something. That's my guess there. Um, uh, I got it pulled up right here. It just says versus. Well, so. that's because you don't have the, the metrics. I'll pull it up Box. on Kids. Doesn't say. That uh, really narrows it down. Hold on. Uh, I don't. I Alabama don't is neutral. Favorite. Alabama is neutral, oh. and Arizona is semi home. Where's the Alabama game at? Washington or something? No. Can't be. Hold on, hold on. Let me do something. Let me do something. Uh, it is uh, at Coca Cola Coliseum, Ontario. Yeah, wherever that is. Toronto. How do you know where that is? Anyway, why are um, they going to Toronto? Because it's Zach Eady. Where is the uh, Arizona-Purdue game? Gainbridge Fieldhouse. 
Indy, right? Yeah, I think that's Indy. Is that the um, one that's downtown Indy? Yeah. Uh, okay, Nebraska is seven zero. Pacers play. That's on Peacock. Oh, there you go, Peacock game. Great Peacock game <laughs> between two of the best teams in the country. Great. Uh, Nebraska, like we said it before the season, Purdue has an insane. Purdue has a game against Indiana on Peacock. It's insane. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Nebraska 7 0. They got a game against Creighton on Sunday in uh in Lincoln. Remember last season they beat Creighton. So and Creighton coming they off did. uh Creighton had a tough loss. They lost to somebody that was a little puzzling, right? Yeah, they did. Um that was uh that one team. Uh Colorado State, not Colorado so puzzling State. though. Lost the Colorado four. State's now ranked. They, they played good, Colorado yeah. tonight. There's some good basketball on tonight. Also got uh Creighton, Oklahoma State tomorrow, so they still have a game before. But uh, I think Nebraska is probably going to lose that game. It's a revenge spot. I think Nebraska is good, somewhat, but I don't think they're like seven and zero good. Uh, Jeff thinks Marquette. If Marquette would have doubled the ED earlier in the game and put more pressure on the ball, they would win. Purdue struggled when they did. That's Purdue does struggle against pressure. Um, yeah. But I think that's still a growing thing. Later in the season, they'll be better at it. And I also I think their guards are still a lot better. And Lance Jones is a guy that takes some pressure off of those guys. Uh, Steve says Marquette and Wisconsin will be a great game Saturday. Bucky might get them at home. No shot. Uh, yeah, I think Marquette's going to beat them up. I don't oh. think Wisconsin is very good. I mean, maybe I feel like Wisconsin always pulls a performance like this out of some true. Yeah. They did win the Fort Myers tip-off thing, didn't they? I mean, they're 5-2. and two. Uh, they're Fort Myers. They, I mean, they beat Virginia by 24. That's an example of. A, I, I don't think Virginia is very good, but that's an example of that. Uh, they also beat Western Illinois by 22. Wow. So Illinois beat them by more than that easily. Maybe a bit of a red flag that uh, Wisconsin only scored 71 points against that Western team. Yikes. <laughs> and under 70, I guess SMU and Virginia are pretty good defensively, but still. Red flag, it's 59 points against Providence for Wisconsin. Their offense, not great to start the year. Efficiency-wise it is, but points-wise, you know, it likes to put up some more points. Uh, we also have Maryland, Indiana, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Purdue Northwestern, upcoming Big Ten games. Uh, give me the Hoosiers, the Badgers, and Purdue Boilermakers in, that, in those three. Uh, I, I do think it's interesting that we have Indiana and Maryland playing in the who can be more disappointing bowl. <laughs> early in the season on Friday at Indiana, though I think Indiana is going to win that game. But Indiana, they are on a list of unimpressive teams. They're 348th in the country in three-point shooting, 24%. That's just brutal. Uh, they've had a lot of close games against bad teams. If they haven't. Indiana has not effectively blown somebody out yet, and they've played 230th FGCU, 331st Army, 158th Louisville, 134th Harvard. They've been playing these great teams, yet they're having trouble pulling away from anybody. And their one test, UConn, destroyed them. And I, I that's how it should be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Indiana leaves a little bit to be desired. How many teams do you think the Big Ten is going to get in the tournament if you just had to throw a number out there right now? I would say six. I had seven. But I don't I even think, know who. I think Purdue, like one, one Michigan State two, Wisconsin three, Illinois four. These are these are just counting. This is not ranking. Uh, and then it gets uh, tough. Like uh, North Northwestern probably. Yeah. I think so that's five for me. Ohio State I Ohio think. Ohio State. That's six. So I would kind of almost cut it off there. And then you're like, okay, Iowa, Nebraska, Michigan, Maryland, Rutgers, Indiana. Those are the teams in the mix. Yeah. Penn State, Minnesota, no. Indiana, by the metrics right now, is the third worst team in the Big Ten. So <laughs> Northwestern's fourth worst, Maryland's fifth worst, Rutgers sixth. So Man. I think the concern for Iowa, Nebraska, and Michigan is that they're all top 25 efficiency teams on offense, but they're all worse sub 100 defensively. If I think it'll it'll improve for Nebraska, Michigan, probably not for Iowa. But I'm curious, like the Big Ten does not feature it features more better offensive than defensive teams with efficiency right now. It's like that'll play a factor. It's also a very tempo-y conference. Like the Purdue and Iowa and Penn State are high-level tempo teams, which high tempo, the stat, is not based on, you know, just running the floor. It's based on several factors in terms of, you know, shot clock stuff. By the way, I saw Jim Beheim says the 
college basketball should have a 24 second shot clock. I totally agree with that. Like 30 say what is this? What is this I'm little league ball? Jesus, 30 <laughs> seconds. It used to be 35. What the hell right. are they thinking? Uh it's yeah, 24 would be great. Uh Bayheim, girls anyway, 24. I don't know. Women, oh, sorry. <laughs> Whatever you call it. <laughs> I don't watch it intently enough. Like I, I did watch the Illinois women against Notre Dame, where by the way, ref show, Jesus, women's basketball refs. My God, it's they were there was a whistle every five seconds. That game was on NBC. It was probably three hours. And they lost. It was a ref show. Mm, it's 30, never mind. But it's four quarters. So yeah. Uh, what else did I write? Uh, Big Ten ranks fourth out of 32 conferences by adjusted EM on Ken Palm, which measures this. Hold on. You're multiplying uh, and dividing again. Ranking of conferences by adjusted EM, which I don't remember what it stands for. I'm sorry. Efficiency metrics probably or something. Of teams, <laughs> ranking of conferences by adjusted EM of team that's expected to go 500 in conference play. So Why is the J lowercase in that? Looks at the depth of uh, what? A D lowercase J E M. It's an accident, obviously. Jesus. Um, I was just asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just. I didn't know if there was a reason. Uh, MJ would like the thirty-five second shot clock back. That's an opinion. Yes. Um, Big Twelve <laughs> is number one. Big East number two. SEC three. Big Ten four. It's kind of like a looking at kind of the depth of the conferences. You know, the, the top, the bottom, the whole, the whole, the whole big thing. Because you have some really, but like the opposite end of conferences is like is like the Northeast Conference against the Big Twelve. So it's kind of like a one versus thirty two is is different. Um, who is Kim Apom? Did I type that or did you just edit that? You probably just said that. I didn't touch it. Another accident. What do you want to say? I, was, I, I don't know. I mean, I typed Coleman a one time. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm I, not saying that you can't say that. I'm just saying, you know, what do you want me to do? Uh, MJ says it allows for additional time to run more sophisticated plays and not just 1v1 pick and rolls constantly. I feel like you're grasping at straws here. It's five seconds. I mean... Uh. And if you, think Brad Under, if you think Brad Underwood is going to run anything sophisticated, I mean, we're not, you know. Uh, why Why even have a shot clock? So you just pretty much, and no offense to anybody, you just pretty much want to shoot yourself in the face while you're watching college basketball. Because, like, nobody <laughs> slow wants down to watch the game, slow MJ down says. the game. Come on. 40-second shot clock. I would not. I would stop watching if it was 40 seems, seconds. That seems you want to watch, you wanna watch Iowa football on the basketball court, basically. You want to watch Iowa and Illinois go toe to toe in a thirteen to ten battle, or something like that. Uh, before we get out of here, women's basketball used to be forty five seconds. I don't know what men's used to be, but college football conference championship week. Uh, I didn't know if anybody was looking at some of the numbers from Vegas. Did anybody see Iowa's team total for the Point game five? for the first half? Point five, but six and a half overall in the game. Take the under, folks. Take the under. Maybe not in the first half, because I mean, they might be able to get a field goal in the first half. But <laughs> yeah, it's it point, says a lot about point five has ever been an, an over under in a college football game. I mean, I think maybe for like, not for a big, not for a, a no, may, like like SC, the SEC has that like week ten or week eleven or game ten or game eleven where they always play like really. Terrible opponents. So Easy. and Jeffrey, I mean, Jeff's what are we attacking doing? golf now. Holy cow! Do you even know the hat that I'm clock. wearing? They do need a shot clock in golf, though. I don't Does he even know the hat that I'm wearing? Bergy says, I'm "Bring wearing, back the jump ball after every basket." <laughs> I am literally wearing a golf hat, Jeffrey. What is wrong and with golf? By the way, Tiger Woods. That, that swing Tiger Woods awful. teeing it up tomorrow. Please See don't. That? That doesn't say golf either. It's a golf hat, guys. Relax. What's that haircut say, though? Yeah, that's great. Um, Tiger Woods teeing it up tomorrow. Are you going to watch? Uh, I am busy. What time? I think it's like 11 our time, maybe, or 12. Um, I catch a few. Did you Have you seen his swing? It's not, it doesn't look great. Yeah, I don't think we should expect it to look great. I mean, it looks like he's in pain. He says he's not, though. He's fine. 
That's good. Rub some dirt on it. What are we doing here? It's good. I mean, I didn't know I, if you were a lot so... of us normies play through pain every day. You know, True. I didn't know if you were so pro live that you wouldn't even watch. You would protest because I think it's. Re- I think they're getting. I'm more points. pro Tiger Woods than pro live. You better be. I mean, live stinks. Um, I didn't know. Like, I think are they getting world ranking points for this tournament? Because that's egregious. If so, that's the reason that I said that. Because maybe thought they might be. Because it's like a twenty four man. It's stupid. Um, <laughs> it, it, Jeffrey didn't say anything was wrong with golf other than watching it. I I think the <laughs> if you I think uh-huh. yeah I don't know what do you want to say I I didn't want to go too hard there. College football continues. Let's talk. All right. <laughs> uh, if Alabama, Michigan, Texas, Oregon, and Florida State win their conference championships, who goes to the playoff? Here we go. Let's break it down. Number one, I think Michigan goes, obviously. Uh, Georgia, I think, goes even if they lose. I think they've built up some level of credibility there. Um, Florida State's the hard one. I think the committee also likes Oregon more than any other team that has a loss right now, which Alabama and Texas have losses. I think Oregon is automatically in if they win. And if they're not, I will literally. That's the Oregon fan. I They're in. Uh, they're number five right now. That's the highest ranked one loss team. Why would the committee not put them in if they beat Washington, who's number three? They would put them in. Uh, Texas, I think Texas and Alabama is the big argument because. You can't Texas, put. You can't put. Alabama in and not put Texas in. Right? That's the problem. Texas beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa, but it was so long ago. And it's SEC against Big 12. The Big 12 is terrible. They haven't lost a game since. Like, I mean, they haven't. Who'd they lose to? Texas lost to Oklahoma, who, oh, you know, kind of stinks. Sorry. But um, I think if those teams win, I think it's Michigan won. By the way, if Iowa wins, that's a doomsday scenario. God knows what the hell they would do. Ohio State might get in if that happens. Um, I think it's Michigan one in that scenario. I think it's Georgia two. I think Oregon three. And then I think it comes down to Alabama, Texas, and Florida State for the fourth spot. And the problem, they have Florida State four right now. So you can't, can you really penalize Florida State for losing and being 13 and 0? I know the ACC stinks and their quarterback got hurt. That's kind of the problem. Yeah. There's precedent for teams losing a player and not getting in or getting in. Um, I would love to see Florida. St- uh, the problem also is like Florida State has a zero percent chance to beat Georgia or Michigan without a quarter. Like there's no way. So you're just throwing another terrible. Like it's the last year of the fourteen playoff. You're throwing another terrible team. Like you remember, uh, I guess Cincinnati actually was competitive against Alabama somewhat in that game a few years ago. But either way, Oregon's in if they win. I'm very <laughs> nervous though because I think the media and people around college football love Oregon so much right now. Oregon lost to Washington and Oregon is a nine and a half point favorite this week with no injuries on either side of a notable player that's going to miss a game. It's just, it's a very scary spot to be in when everybody thinks you're going to win. Don't they think Penix is hurt or something? Yeah, but he's still going to play. And Dan Lanning is 21 and four at Oregon and he's 21 and two against teams not named Washington. So that's another scary part is that Washington weirdly matches up well against them but either way very nervous already and i'm glad illinois is not playing friday night because that would be annoying as hell to have to deal with that again <laughs> um to watch that again but like i said yeah i think what actually happens is georgia one michigan two pac-12 winner three and then you have a conversation of alabama florida state texas for four and i think it's hard to like if you're a florida state fan i think you almost have to understand them leaving you out we're not talking about a 13-0 SEC team here. It's the ACC number one. They don't have a quarterback number two. You went there for like a month. That's number three. That's a red flag. That's um, true. I don't know. I I, I want to see Texas fans get hurt, though, because they pissed me off on Twitter. Texas fans and New York Knicks fans pissed me off this week. So there you go. Oh, I hope Oregon wins so you don't get I, sad. I will not even talk during the watch party on Saturday if they lose. <laughs> this is the game of the century. Well, they play Friday night. Seven o'clock, yeah. All in right. Vegas. You want to do a watch party for it? Not really. I'm a little crazier during football games <laughs> uh, than basketball. I'd like to see that. Maybe wait, if they get to the national championship, I'll do something. Uh Steve Pool game's going well. Uh won five out of six last week. Well, not last week. That was Thanksgiving. Week before. Uh 
got to work tomorrow, so I got a sub. So I probably won't win any games, but I think I'm leading it right now. So thanks for asking. Uh, all right. Well, final call, last call. Lots of <laughs> random. You guys uh, throw some questions out there. I will tell you about Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon at 700 East Broadway Avenue in Mattoon, Illinois. Find them online at www.alamos-steakhouse.com. Uh, Wednesday is tonight, right? I always get the days wrong. I assume today is Wednesday. Uh, yep. They got a smoked tenderloin medallions, uh, slow smoked with a barbecue drizzle. And don't forget to catch the November features before they're gone. It's almost December. That's insane. Uh, they got a chili cheeseburger on special and they have a pumpkin creme brulee dessert. Uh, so thank you again, Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon for supporting us. If you guys would like to be a sponsor for our episodes or our watch party, as always, you can reach out to us at Twitter or you can email us at Illini basketball podcast at gmail.com. If you can like subscribe, share, I think we're up to three. 80 or 390 on on youtube uh yeah definitely a number one of those sure. we're almost to 400 uh push for 400 it's coming yep. and then ethan shoots baskets for 24 hours straight so 392 392 eight so, more to 400 yep but uh we will see you guys saturday we got a comment here geez in the basement <laughs> <laughs> uh does Ian deserved to be in the top 10 rank with two losses. I don't think so. Tennessee. I mean, I don't know. I, top 10. They lost to Purdue losses. in Kansas. Yeah. And it's also an AP poll in November. It doesn't really matter. Lost two top 10 teams. And they play North Carolina tonight. Play, so Play North Carolina tonight. Then, they got to play Illinois. Then they got to play a really, really good Illinois team. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, don't you want them to be ranked top 10 when Illinois – Goes there and yeah. beats them. I hope they win tonight. They're not going to go there and beat them, but yeah, for your sake, you'll be there, right? So hopefully, we'll be there. We're leaving. We just uh, finished the plans. We were leaving at seven a.m. on Friday. Yeah, I would have gone, guys, but I wasn't invited. Um, so drive. you're more than welcome to come. Uh, yeah, it's a little late for that. I got other <laughs> other obligations. Um, I didn't figure you'd want to be in a car with people you don't know for eight hours. That would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. 392, Joe says. Look at us. We get to 400. Oh. Ethan is doing a 24 hour marathon. I feel like you have to be involved in that too, but whatever. I mean, I'll um, stop by and say hello. Jesus. Um, you need to get I got, you I got to, a job. Who cares? You need to get a gym <laughs> for that. We need a gym for this. That would be very easy, but it's fine. We could probably find somebody. I don't think anybody's going to let us be in a gym for 24 hours. I don't think I could be – I can't be alive for 24 hours doing that. Maybe 12 hours. Um, anyway, uh, final thoughts here, um, given the hat that I'm wearing. Europe is running a bag with Luke Donald in 2025. Uh, if you're the U.S., you can't counter with Zach Johnson again. So so who's your guy for 2025? Go ahead. Beth Page Black, U.S. Ryder Cup captain. Tiger Woods. I think – I no, he's 2027. Take Tiger out of the conversation. Really? 2027 at Dare Manor, Tiger Woods, yeah. Next time you go to Europe, I think you run it back with Steve Stricker from 2021. That's what I would do. Okay, but they're I'm gonna, gonna read. They're gonna. They're gonna pick. They're gonna pick Stewart Sink. Probably it's just so stupid. But yeah, I, I wanted to get that in since I saw that Luke Donald was returning for Europe this year. Jeff, thanks. Cotton Eye Joe's. All right, we'll be there. Is that food or is that alcohol? Because I don't drink. Okay. Um. All right. That'll do it for us. See everybody Saturday afternoon. Uh. Rutgers, Illinois watch party. Um, we have two in a row, it appears. Rutgers and FAU. The plan. It's FAU game Tuesday. Yeah, it's a Tuesday night MSG. Um, okay. Jimmy V Classic. Jimmy V. The uh, Jimmy V Foundation. If you want to donate, you could do that, which we did. And I've gotten about seven letters in the last year wanting more so money. So you're never doing that again. Huh? Maybe this season I'll do it again. Just, you know, it's a good thing to do. We got business account money. We can throw a little bit there away if Illinois wins, you know, even if they lose, we'll throw something there. Take all that uh, money on stream, you heard. Good point. Um, I don't want to do that. Shooting six hours straight in sub 10 degree weather. That's no fun. I want to show off my skills a little bit, you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll shove them in the snow, make them play out there. 
There you go. All right. We'll see everybody Saturday uh, in the afternoon.